June 28, 1776. Nearly two weeks before the signing of the Declaration of Independence, an independent state of South Carolina took on the might of the British Empire at the Battle of Sullivan's Island near Charleston and won. By early 1776, the British military was looking for a new plan of attack against American rebels in North America. British Army forces had primarily been tied up with the Siege of Boston in 1775. General Henry Clinton and Admiral Sir Peter Parker began seeking bases of operation where they had more control, so they began planning on an expedition to the southern colonies. Parker sent ships on scouting expeditions up and down the East Coast. Reports on the partially finished condition of the Charleston defenses were sufficiently promising. The decision was made to send the fleet south. South Carolina had declared independence in early 1776 and established a provincial congress a full three months before the Declaration of Independence was signed. John Rutledge, recently elected president of the South Carolina General Assembly, organized a defensive force under the command of 46-year-old Colonel William Moultrie, a former militiaman and Indian fighter. Moultrie's forces comprised three infantry regiments, two rifle regiments, a small artillery regiment, and they were supported by the arrival of Continental Army regiments from North Carolina and Virginia, as well as militia numbering 2,700 from Charleston and the surrounding backcountry. Moultrie saw Sullivan's Island, a sandy pit of land at the entrance to Charleston Harbor, as a place well-suited to build a fort that could protect the entrance from intruding enemy warships. He and his 2nd South Carolina Regiment set about constructing a fortress built out of palmetto logs to defend the island. When the British fleet arrived in early June, they landed troops on Long Island, now called Isle of Palms, in preparation for a naval bombardment and land assault. On June 28th, the British assault on Sullivan's Island began. British frigates bombarded the garrison's wall with 24 and 32 pound shot and explosive shells, but the tough, pliable palmetto logs dampened the initial blow by absorbing the shot and thereby lessening the damage. The Americans slowly and purposely aimed their big guns at the anchored ships and poured shot after shot into the ship's holes. The devastation to the British fleet was massive. During the battle, the fort's flag was shot away and fell outside the fort, disheartening both the soldiers fighting and the citizens of Charlestown lining the harbor to observe the battle. Many within the town assumed the end was near and the fort was about to fall. But soon after, the flag once more reappeared, fluttering over the fort's rim, reviving the defenders' spirits. Sergeant William Jasper had leapt from behind the fort's wall and retrieved the flag. He fixed it on a temporary staff and held it up under fire until a new staff was installed. The flag once more waved in the air, reviving drooping spirits. Defeat at Fort Sullivan on that fateful day would have given British troops control over the vital port of Charleston and essentially the entire state of South Carolina at a very critical time. Despite an overwhelming advantage in cannon, the British ships were unable to silence the guns at Fort Sullivan. Unable to force the harbor and taking significant damages, the British fleet withdrew and sailed north. President John Rutledge recognized Sergeant Jasper's bravery during the battle with the gift of his personal sword. One militiaman had helped turn the tide of the battle. Jasper, however, would not see the end of the war. He would die at the Siege of Savannah in 1779, still fighting for freedom. Colonel Moultrie would survive the war and go on to serve as governor of South Carolina. In his later years, he would write his memoirs of the war. He died in Charleston, South Carolina in 1805 at the age of 74. The Battle of Sullivan's Island was over, and for the moment, the city of Charleston and South Carolina remained free of British dominance. And now we know. And knowing is half the battle.